Well, at least this time the twist wasn't that she was actually in hell the entire time. It does have that going for it. In Hellraiser Deader, a journalist uncovers an underground group who can bring back the dead and slowly becomes drawn into their world. Welcome to Box of Chocolates, where you never know what you're gonna get. Today we're continuing the Hellraiser review series. I'm going through this whole franchise for the first time, leading up to the new one that's coming out on Hulu in October. We've talked about all the other ones leading up to Deader, which is just the worst title. It sounds so dumb. Hellraiser Deader. After two straight-to-video movies that were basically the exact same thing, I was like, there's no way they could do that a third time, but I also didn't know what they would do. So let's go ahead and talk about what Deader does right and wrong, all in my opinion, of course. If you've seen it, leave your thoughts down in the comments so that we can talk about it. And we're not going to go into spoilers. So this one came out in 2005, same director as the last one, Rick Bota. And I will say right off the bat, to give it credit, it does take a little bit more of a departure compared to Inferno and Hellseeker, which were very similar to each other and were very bland kind of detective stories, somebody wandering around not knowing what's going on in a very unengaging mystery until the Hellraiser elements are suddenly shoehorned in at the end. They had some okay things going for them, but the stories themselves were very bland. This does something a little bit more interesting, a little bit more unique. It sets itself apart from those last couple of stories. Once again, it was not originally meant to be Hellraiser. This was a spec script that existed called Deader. They picked it up and they said, insert the Cenobites in there. But this one works a little bit more with that because of this idea of this cult resurrecting themselves, gaining immortality, exploring this other world. It makes sense why they would look at that and say, insert the Cenobites. It's a much more interesting idea, exploring this cult, how they're doing what they're doing, why they're doing it in a different setting. We're in Romania and uh, it's got a nice, different kind of feel to the environment. And you also have the main character getting wrapped up in this, Kari Wurrer, who was in Anaconda. She's the main lead in this and she does a pretty good job. I, I like this lead a lot more than the few that we've had for quite a while now. She has a very fucked up past and this has led her to be really determined in her job as a journalist to just throw herself head along into whatever dangerous or messed up situations they need her to because she doesn't really seem to care much about her life, doesn't really have much going on for her in her life. And so I was enjoying watching her journey. I thought she was doing a pretty good job. I suppose I will just have to continue appreciating Doug Bradley while we still have him. You know, he shows up for a minute and a half as has been the case for a little while now as Pinhead. He does his job very well and then he's gone. So he's not gonna be in it for much longer. I think the next one is the last one with him. So I'll still appreciate him while he's here. There's some blood and gore, some disturbing imagery, some disturbing scenarios. Visually, I'll give it that. There's a lot of nudity in this one. So that's something. On to the negatives though, visually it's not all peachy because there is some CG chains and yeah, <laughs> you're just watching a Hellraiser movie, you're in this gritty environment, this disturbing stuff is happening, this main character with a traumatizing past and people are resurrecting themselves and then there's just a cartoon, there's just cartoon chains that pop up in the middle and uh, they do not look good in the slightest. And even though this does feel more worthy of being Hellraiser than the last couple did, it still doesn't actually feel like Hellraiser. It still feels like it is a different movie and it feels like it would have been better as a different movie because it still doesn't fully make any sense as Hellraiser. When you get into the intricacies of the story by the third act, it just doesn't really make any sense. They bring up stuff like the only people who can open the box are certain chosen people who have a specific trauma in their past. And I'm like, is that right? Has that been the case the whole time? Is that canon? Like I. I don't know, but it just, it doesn't actually feel like Hellraiser once again. It feels a little more natural. It feels like this is the kind of thing you could do to bring back Hellraiser with this kind of cult, if that's what you were striving for from the beginning, but it's not what they were doing when they wrote the script initially. It feels like they were shoehorned in because they were. If the movie was free to do whatever it wanted, do its own thing, it didn't have to have the puzzle box or pinhead, 
I don't know that it could have been an amazing movie. It's some random direct-to-video thing, but it probably would have been a little bit more solid because they would have had some more freedom. It's just that you got to bank on that name recognition to get people to watch it. I'm also kind of mixed on the ending. Our main character kind of has like a clear arc that she's maybe set out for that I thought she was going to have that I thought would have been good for her character and we didn't quite go there. I'm okay with where we went but it, it does kind of feel a little bit wasted what they could have done with her character instead. So there's not a lot to say. It's another one of the direct-to-video Hellraisers that's not actually Hellraiser. You know they kind of blend together but this one does stand out more than the last couple. I'm gonna go with two out of five. I'm not actually disappointed because what was I expecting, but it's not the worst thing and I don't recommend it unless you really, really want more Hellraiser and you want a bit of a departure from what the last couple were. I'm at least disappointed in the continued misuse of Pinhead and the Hellraiser name. So as long as the next couple sequels can at least switch things up a little bit, I expect them all to be pretty much along the same general lines. But if you can change slight little things in the story, have some good leading actors in there, I think I can get through it just fine. So we only have a few more, then we got the new one coming out, but leave your thoughts down below on Hellraiser Dead or we can talk about it down there. Leave a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me. Got a lot more coming, Hellraiser, Halloween, other movies new and old of all genres. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you for the next one.